Hey everybody, this is Arathas, and welcome to Field of Glory 2. Now for those of you who are unaware of the game, it is basically a turn-based historical war game. And when it first came out, it was based in like just the Roman era. But as time has passed since the release, they have released a lot of DLC. Uh, you can see it going from Immortal Fire, which I believe is the... Um, like you can see right there, Alexander the Great. We have the Persian ones. We have Age of Belisarius. All of these add new time periods and new troops. So now it's not just, you know, not just Roman era stuff. You have the Greeks, you have the Persians. Uh, with the newest DLC that we're checking out today that hasn't actually been released yet, I believe it releases, according to the Steam store, uh, the 30th of this month, is Wolves at the Gate which focuses on the Dark Ages and lets you play as the Vikings. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of stuff here. Like, there are a ton of campaigns to play. So, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Wolves from the Sea. I have actually already have a mission set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and load it up right now. Uh, the main reason I did this is if you... The initial troop selection screen and deployment uh, can be quite lengthy, so I didn't want to have you guys sit there and watch. And yeah, it looks like the maps are randomly generated, because this is the first mission of my campaign. But I've looked at... I've started this campaign a couple times, and the map's layout has changed each time. Now, when you first start the game and you're picking up your missions, basically how the game's going to run is... A little bit like if you guys watched my series on Sanctus Reach, a bit like that. You're given a point total and a troop list to choose from. As the Vikings, I got to pick between... I have an example of every Viking unit here. I have the poorly armed rabble, and I can actually zoom in if you guys want to see detail. So we have the poorly armed rabble, which are basically just peasants with spears. We have the shield wall, an offensive shield wall, which are, are not quite bottom tiered. They're just... They're a little bit above it, according... Like, from based on the army list we have the uh, berserkers here which are our elites and then we have our huskarls which are not elite but pretty good <laughs> and heavily armored if we come over here we have the mounted huskarls with spears that can actually dismount and fight with just normal spears i think they just turn into a smaller unit of these guys and let's see, what other units did I have? I have just one other, and they're over here in the trees. Uh, these are my archers, light archers. So yeah, I didn't have a lot of units to pick from, but I got a good, I got a good mix here. And just to give you an idea of how many different units and factions there are in the game, we have, you can see the Pictish Spearmen. We have Noble Cavalry. Scot-Irish Foot. Yeah, just all kinds of stuff. I, there should be... Yeah, they always have light javelin horses and light javelin men. And there's also slingers and stuff in the game, chariots, all kinds of stuff. And just to give you an idea how how many factions are in the game, this last DLC, if I remember correctly, added 19 factions you can play as. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Uh, this is also a pretty serious war game if you guys haven't uh, like it takes a lot of stuff into account. So, for example, it does take your elevation. So if you're at a higher elevation in melee or charging, you will do a lot more damage, and the enemy will have a harder time doing damage to you. Line of sight is important. There are flanking maneuvers. And, yeah, we'll just go ahead and start the battle, and you guys can see how it plays out from there. Oh, yeah, also, when you build your troops, uh, put your troop list together, they let you deploy them however you like. Uh, up to a certain point. This is as far north as I could. This is as far from the edge of the map as I could deploy. And you get to also assign generals to individual units. And these generals can move. You can transfer them to new units if you want. Uh, won't right now because that's a different type of unit. So yeah. Either way. Here we go. Now, one thing I do like about this game is you'll see right there, uh, when you first start the battle, until battle is joined, until the actual first hit strike, you can move your dudes as a formation. 
Uh, just, it's a time saver. It's a big time saver. However, that is not what I'm doing today. I want you guys to stay in the woods. And we're going to turn and shoot because you have the options of hitting somebody with your full arc of fire, which does more damage. Or you can do like a slight arc of fire. So you can see right there, half arc of fire, zero to two casualties. Full arc of fire requires you to turn. Depending on the unit you're attacking, you'll do more damage. Now, I'm concentrating on these javelin horsemen right here because they are my most hated unit to fight against. The problem with the javelin horsemen is if you try to chase them down with your troops, they are very, very good at um, running away. <laughs> and I don't like dealing with that. All right, we're going to keep everybody else in formation. Maybe actually move you... No, just you. Eh. Yeah, I was thinking about moving him to the side and getting him in the trees, but if I remember correctly, his troop type doesn't do well in the trees. And I'll actually move him into that space once there is an opening. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and let things proceed. See, now everything's being moved piecemeal. Now, I've not seen if there is a fast forward button for this, but eh, it doesn't take too long. And as you'll see when we get into the fight here, there's another really big difference about how this game works. You... These battles take a bit longer than your average strategy game these days. In that you will see right there. In fact, I'll take it back to these dudes here in a second. Oh, you're going to javelins to get me. Okay. Not great. Javelins are a bit rough. They do more damage than bows. They just don't have the range. All right. So what I was going to say is you saw how I was doing damage of one, five, three, whatever. You can see right there under strength, that's actually what you're hitting. And when a unit gets to half strength, sometimes lower depending on their unit type and their, how elite they are, they will often break and run. And that's the end of their unit. So yeah, that's kind of the goal here is to try to get as many enemies to rout. And what I kind of like about it is that as you play the game, you very quickly discover this game is not about annihilating the enemy. You will not be able to... Well, I'm not going to say you will not be able to, but it is very difficult to get rid of the enemy. Like, to wipe it out. Instead, what you're going to be aiming to do is try to get them to break and run. It's kind of your biggest goal. And I'm just going to let them keep advancing on me. Except for you. I want you in the trees. Really wish I could turn you. Then I'm going to turn him here in a second. All right. And there's a lot of things to keep in mind. Like, for example, turning your units to a different facing will cost you AP unless you're within range of a general unit in their command range, at which point it's free. So it kind of makes you need to keep your generals in close com like in close quarters with everybody else. Because, yeah, AP is like everything in this game so far. At least as far as I can tell. Yeah, see, he's gone. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. That's not something they do very often is engage in close quarters combat. All right, so this dude's getting pretty low. All right, so right here you'll see if I fight him in melee, I have a 10% chance to win, 13% chance to lose, and a 77% chance to draw. 
Uh, draw just means you'll be within a point of each other in terms of how much damage you take. And a loss doesn't mean I lose the unit or take huge casualties. I just take more damage than he does. So that was a draw right there. And we are going to start taking shots at the general here. Another thing I like is your archers cannot fire at full strength indefinitely. If you look here, you'll see he has ammunition for three turns. That just means he has three more attacks uh, with his bow, at which point he can still shoot. But as the game describes it, they are now scavenging after that fifth round of fire. And this is for all ranged units, not just the archers. The slingers have five rounds. The javelins have five rounds. The mounted javelins have five rounds. Uh, the way the game describes it is they're scavenging the battlefield for ammo after that. And yeah, you can see here the um, strength of the melee units are quite high. <laughs> uh, in terms of how long it's going to take to murder them. Okay, we'll show off a little bit more when the enemy gets a little closer. Uh, of the melee combat and the different considerations you'll have there. All right, so it looks like they can move two squares. Okay. Yeah, get closer. Come on. Now, on this flank over here, I'm thinking I'm going to try to kill their noble cavalry. Cavalry, yeah, so. So, now here is where some other considerations come in. So, with this dude right here, he's in melee combat. I can no longer hit this dude with my archers. Like, I can no longer hit this enemy with any ranged fire. What I have to do is I have to... Um, you know, I can join in melee to try to help break that dude off. And he can try to flank me, which will do a ton of damage because my dude's already in melee. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And because this is a general, I'm going to try to focus as much fire on him as possible. Oh, cool. We disrupted his morale. Yeah, there's several levels of morale. It goes disrupted, fragmented. And, yeah, eventually you can get them to rout. Yeah, keep taking shots at this dude. I do not want his slingers to have a chance to come back. Oh, that sucked. So he can move two squares, so his troops will get within range if he keeps marching forward in this formation. Okay. Can I reach him? No. Okay. Also, every unit has what they call a zone of control in front of them that will kind of lock an enemy in place once they get in that zone of control. Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn. Let them get a little bit closer because it looks like they're not going to be able to attack me. Ooh, they're all gathering on those archers. I don't like that. Okay, cool. They're not going to be able to attack me. Now, the reason I did that and was really worried to see if, like, you know, who would come to grips with the enemy first, like, whether it was going to be them or me, um, there are two types of attacks in this game. There is... Uh, two types of combat. Impact combat and melee combat. Melee is this drawn out... Yeah. They messed up my archers there. And the archers are now fragmented. So. Yeah, those archers aren't going to survive. Which is fine. So. Impact is basically... Yeah, we'll show here. You can see right there, impact is, is their initial charge. 32% chance to win, 65% chance to draw, lose, 3% chance. And I can also melee, which if you look over here, is this drawn out. When you see these marks around it, your unit is in full melee. 
And now I can't shoot any of these dudes. Because they're busy. <laughs> and what I like about the impact is what that reminds me of is if you've looked at, if you've ever looked at Roman era combat, uh, impact, you can kind of see it as before the Romans engaged in melee, a lot of times they'd throw their javelins, pilum, whatever you want to call them. I think pilum is actually what they're called. But yeah, so that's kind of what's going on there. So... So I like to be the one to get the initial charge. So we can get that impact. And see, right here. I'm under the zone of control of the Scott Irish foot, which means I have to deal with him. I can't go and try to kill this dude. So we're going to do this. Now, what I might be able to do... Cool. See, he took a ton of damage from that. And now I can engage with this dude. Alright, let's just... Let's just engage them across the board. Ooh, there's a good chance I'll lose that one. And this is the other thing I really like about this game is, and the DLC and everything, is it's not an instant death or very quick battle. It's trying, I feel like it's trying to give you that feel of like the long drawn out, I don't want to say like slogs that they had back in the day, but you know, it is kind of what it is. Like you're drawn into this long battle. And we're basically disrupting their lines right now. And now I gotta deal with this dude. So in melee, actually, my berserkers would lose to this dude more often than not. But because of impact, they're not going to lose. And I have no choice but to, like you saw right there, I went ahead and triggered the melee attack. Uh, there's no way to get around that. If I hadn't have done it, all triggering the melee attack does is lets you determine the order of how the melee is going to be played out. You are not... If I don't do it manually, when I end my turn, all that will resolve before the enemy starts their turn. Alright, I will lose that one badly. <laughs> okay, so we can charge and win that one. And the nice thing about the charging, I've noticed, is you can't just straight up charge any enemy you see. You can't. Uh, your cavalry has to be at least aimed in their general direction when you start your turn. Okay. So I'm going to leave him there because I want him to try to get potentially a flanking attack if this dude goes after our... Uh, cavalry. Okay. So yeah, if I want this dude to like charge and flank this dude, what I would need to do is at least turn my unit like this. But since I didn't start my turn facing within 45 degrees, I can't charge him yet. Yeah, there is a lot of little rules like that that... Honestly, do complicate the game, but I kind of like it. So let's continue. And I do like if your dudes are in melee and you just don't, like if you miss, like you forget, or you just didn't spot one of your dudes was in melee, you don't lose your attack. The game will automatically resolve that. I think that's useful. Because with some of these battles, from what I've seen of some of the earlier... 
um, some of the earlier DLC battles, it's pretty... Like, the battles get pretty massive. So, yeah. So everything's getting resolved right now, which means his turn's about over. I've noticed the AI doesn't really manually trigger... It. Well, not manually, but... Yeah, you can tell once the melee starts getting resolved that they're about done with their turn. And this is kind of what you're looking to do right here. You're looking to start disrupting their formation and causing them to break. Because it can cause a chain reaction. Especially if you kill a general. Yeah, see those guys routed one after another. Nice. Okay. So if we come over here, you'll see this is kind of the percentage of your forces that are routing kind of the balance of power thing. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to let him continue his fight because I'd really like to try to kill their general. So my archers are going to focus on this over here. There's not a whole lot they can do to help this other dude. So if I turn him, I can probably get him involved in the fight next turn to try to save our archer. Now, this dude isn't at half strength yet, so he might be able to recover and rejoin the fight. Oh, yeah. Murder that dude. Yep. Keep pushing. So, yeah. That formation got routed. Straight up. I want you to smack them down. Uh, I actually want you to go this way, because I'm concerned about this guy. So yeah, we've just triggered that chain reaction right now. And their forces are just falling apart. Which I gotta say is very satisfying once you see it. It, it can take a while to get to that point, because of just how slow the melee goes in this at times. Like, you can see my units here have, like, 160 health. They have 230. When you play some of the missions involving, like, the Roman Legionnaires, those guys have, like, 800 health. Yeah, let's do that. Nice. Keep pushing. And because a lot of your troops have the, like, a lot of your less disciplined troops have a habit of chasing the enemy like our berserkers did and there are even some barbarian units that'll chase them for multiple turns that's a little little frightening to run into frankly okay you're gonna move this way yeah you can r easily end up out of position yep charge him And now. So yeah, that dude's falling apart. But he's one of their strongest units, so... Okay, there is a chance I'll lose this, but I still want to do some damage. Oh no, Impact did a good job for us. Cool. This dude is losing ground. I don't like it, but it is what it is. All right, and that's all I can do right now. Yeah, these have all played out.
Now there's a chance all those routing units will recover and come back. It sucks, but it's it it's there. In fact, I've seen in this uh, both the DLC and the base game, the enemy can actually leave the map entirely when they're routing, reform, and come back. And not just the enemy, your guys can do it too. Ooh, he took a beating. Yeah, I'm not using my uh, cavalry perfectly over there. Like, what you want to do is obviously you want to try to flank the enemy with them now. Right now, because I was horribly outnumbered at the beginning of this fight, I did not have enough troops to kind of hold back their infantry on that side. So basically, my cavalry is a um, sacrificial lamb right now. Oh, cool. Do a little bit of damage. Oh, God. Yeah, those javelin throwers are messing me up. Okay, I think this is our last volley. Alright. Smack this dude in the face. Let's have you turn around. There's nothing you have to worry about over here. Unless, of course, the enemy reforms. No, I don't want to transfer my general. I suppose you could reach them. Nope. Okay. Well, keep smacking the crap out of this dude. Probably be a draw again. Let's turn him so he can actually charge into their flank. Keep it up. Yeah, you can get involved in this. Get ready to charge that way. I wonder if I can disrupt this dude's... No, he's going to move there. Alright. Can't really disrupt that dude's zone of control. I was hoping. Oh, hey. Yeah, these guys are breaking much faster than I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, you can just see a tide of broken units. reason you're not attacking him? Charge! You have AP, what's going on? Hmm. Now that's, I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, the rabble isn't doing so hot. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well. That is still an ongoing fight. They got a huge portion of their troops are just taking off. This could end any minute for us. Like, well... Because if you get enough of their army routed, you can, like, you'll get a message that the enemy has lost heart. I just hope they don't recover. Because my lines are pretty scattered as well. Okay, they just straight up dispersed. It's good to see. Oh, here come their cavalry. Mm, J 
javelins are coming back. Oh yeah, these guys might get murdered. They're not strong. <laughs> Alright, another unit broken. So he's probably going to get off the map this... No, no. Thought for sure he'd get thrown off the map. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty one-sided, but there you go. Gotta say, <laughs> the battles are quite in-depth, and I enjoy the hell out of them. So, yeah. Um, you can see the difference in terms of uh, points. I had 3,600. They had 5,200, which is kind of why I just had my cavalry. Um over there slowing the enemy down so I didn't get flanked. Uh, would have been nice if I had skirmish cavalry for that, but I don't. At least I didn't seem to this time. So yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, this game will be... Uh, the DLC will be out um, May 30th. And the game itself is already out along with, I think, about four or five other DLCs. So yeah, feel free to check it out. I will put the link in the description below. And if you guys are interested in me doing more of this game, please, by all means, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see what I can do. Thanks again for watching, guys.